Good morning. This is Bill from out of House of Naples on a miserable, muggy Florida Thursday. Even worse than usual. I mean, it is a swamp out here. I don't think having standing water on the ground helps much. And uh, the humidity is so thick, uh, I can't really see through my glasses. I can only see this black blur on the view screen of the camera. And I'm hoping that I'm catching the car with it. But we will carry on, and uh, I will find some air conditioning eventually and dry out. Uh, what can I tell you? I, you know, I'm living in absolute terror right now. You know, we've got the statue there. That's not that worrying compared to the goats. I found out yesterday when I got a note from Marianne, and by the way, I get it. You guys want Marianne. You, you have certain things that you've come to expect from this channel in terms of what you can see visually, and I don't cut the mustard, and that's just fine. Uh, I'm just filling in and getting a few cars up, so don't fret. Don't worry. Uh, the lovely and delicious Marianne will be back before you know it. Uh, in the meantime, if you can stand it, I'll try to review and have fun with some of these cars, uh, including this one. But uh, before I get into that, I got a note from Marianne yesterday. Yesterday. As I left, I drove away, just as usual, and she said, oh, please remember to close the gates, uh, because I guess they found the goats in the neighbor's yard. And I said, you know, the what? And she said, yeah, the, the goats got out. The goats. So apparently they have set me up here uh, in this property where there are wild goats. I saw them this morning, actually. I may snip into the camera with that. They are wild and loose and roaming around. And I asked her, they have not had their fangs removed. Uh, they are still free to wander around. And I know how goats work. They hunt in packs. One distracts you from the front with the little, you know, the ba whatever they do, while the others come in from the rear and attack you, wolf style. Uh, and uh, I just can't believe that I was set up that way. And I have this suspicion that it was to make some sort of found footage thing. Uh, you know, we're obviously next to my savagely ripped apart and partially consumed body. They find a camera and then uh, Mary Ann just grabs it and runs the footage on YouTube. Oh, click here. Cameraman dies after assault by savage goats. And uh, it becomes a click-a-thon. The video goes viral because everyone likes to see death and mayhem. And uh, at my expense, uh, this channel gets some more clicks. So uh, I'm definitely keeping an eye out for the goats. Uh, I, You know, I'd stopped. I got too lazy to carry recently, but now I'm carrying again. So uh, if, those, uh, if those things come near me, they're in a lot of trouble. Keep an eye out for them. Uh, but anyway, I digress. Let's get into the car. Uh, this is a 2013 Cadillac CTS V Coupe. So immediately, just in the way that it came from the factory, it's probably one of my all-time favorite cars. I mean, we're talking like top three. Uh, one of the reasons for that is obviously it's a Cadillac. Uh, I mean, if that's not the greatest car company ever, I don't know what is. And yeah, I get it. You know, I'm a bit of a Mercedes guy too, but Cadillac is Cadillac. Uh, you got that guy. I mean, even the way it's found uh, Antoine de la Moth, Sir Le Cadillac, you know, this guy who was a bit of a charlatan and convinced the attractive wife of some nobility to marry him and came up with a fake coat of arms that had a bunch of ducks on it and uh, ended up owning Detroit, basically. And uh, then uh, when Cadillac started, they named the company for him. So he's a bit of a cool cat. I think he went down and ran New Orleans for a while, too, like a mob boss. Uh, but anyway, I, I digress. Very old, very very rich tradition car company uh, that for a long time built these sort of pale yellow cars with pencil thin steering wheels and wire wheel covers and those were the Cadillacs that I liked. Uh, at a certain point the people who built Cadillacs decided they didn't really like Cadillacs and they came out with stuff like this. Uh, I mean what guy in the 1980s or 90s said hey I want my Cadillac to have 556 horsepower be tuned at the Nürburgring turn in sub four second zero to 60 uh, mile times and uh, you know run circles around most of the European competition and the price range but they did and that's what Cadillac came out with and uh, the coupe I think which came out in 2011 uh, to me is just as neat as the wagon I mean obviously the sedans are pretty cool and that's the main CTSV uh, but the coupes and the wagons are where it's at for a car guy uh, the finish on this thing is incredible and uh, it does hold a surprise under the hood, which we'll get into in a minute. Uh, obviously, the 556 uh, under the hood, those ponies weren't enough for the nutjob who owned this thing. 
Uh, it's finished in raven black outside, uh, matching ebony premium leather inside with the Recaro package. Uh, he had these wheels, they were highly polished. He had them black chromed at great expense. Uh, you see it's got some sort of carbon ceramic upgrade on the brakes, which are already giant dinner plate Brembo's behind the wheels. And uh, it is a very, very striking car. Uh, it uses Cadillac's uh, art and science approach, which again goes back to those flaky, snowflakey, you know, weird haired nut jobs who work at these big car companies and probably have a middle office somewhere with Play Doh and uh, teddy bears and coloring books. And they come up with the uh, design philosophy, uh, philosophies for the cars. And uh, this generation was the art and science approach, which, you know, sounds like you need those scissors that don't cut you and, you know, the book bag your mom bought you for the first day of school, but uh, which apparently we don't have anymore. We just have masks and face shields and bulletproof vests and whatever else you need to go to school these days. But uh, anyway, uh, the art and science approach came out. The CTS was the first. Uh, they redesigned it uh, in, uh, I want to say, 09, maybe 08, and it became the second gen uh, CTS-V like this one. And uh, I think it's just friggin' gorgeous. I mean, the coupe styling, it's a love it or hate it thing. Uh, you know, you've got all these sort of conflicting angles coming this way, that way, the other way. Uh, you've got this big high ass end on it with the uh, center mounted uh, rear uh, brake light doubling as a spoiler. I think it's cool as hell. Other people might not. I do think they should have made it a hatchback. I don't know why it's just a trunk. Would have been cool if the whole glass went up as well. It kind of screams to be a hatchback. Uh, you've got these fantastic uh, big twice pipes there at the center bottom. Very sinister looking. You can see the little mesh things. You've got uh, just, I don't know, it's all very, very cool. The V-badge. Let's start inside the trunk and I can see we're probably going to have to move this car <clears throat> to get out of the sun. So I've got a pile of crap in the trunk and I apologize for that. We've got donuts for the guys. Uh, I'm also trying to get them drunk. So I, of course, have my coronavirus whiskey and some Blue Moon to, you know, feed them. I've got my license plate and other crap. Uh, this guy kept his car very, very nice, so it has an indoor car cover, uh, which we just threw in the back there, which goes with uh, the car. And of course, that was used while the car was being stored for its very low 14,000 miles. The guy didn't drive it that much. And again, we're still coming to the engine surprise in this thing. It's in the title, but uh, anyway, look at this. I was driving yesterday in the, in the rain. Anyway, everything very nice in the trunk. You can fit golf clubs back there, no problem. Uh, under the donuts for the guys, it does have an infant retainment net that you can install. So uh, if God help you, you have infants to carry around. Uh, there's a nice little net you can use in the trunk to keep them secure. And uh, since we're going to go on a test drive, I'm going to install my bag plate now. I've been driving around without that, and uh, that'll get you under the scrutiny of the Collier County Sheriff's Department. There we go. All right, let's have a look under the hood. All right, so here we can get into what this car has. So this guy who bought it, uh, again, absolute nut job, decides that 556 horsepower isn't enough for him. Uh, so he calls up Lingenfelter Engineering. That's a word I'm going to have a hard time pronouncing. Uh, Lingenfelter. Uh, John Lingenfelter, the guy who started it, actually passed away in 03 in a drag racing accident. Not immediately, but uh, in a uh, sad sort of decline afterwards. And was an incredible go-fast guy who made it his mission in life to take the best technology coming out of the factory in Detroit and using it in engines, you know, built beyond description in order to gain tons of horsepower. He was big into th uh, fuel injection, you know, the TPI system and other stuff. Uh, if you remember the Sledgehammer Corvette from uh, 1987 or so, uh, that thing ran about 250 horse uh, miles per hour. It was a, um, a, a thousand horsepower. Uh, it was a Callaway car with an engine tuned by Ligenfelter. And uh, what a neat guy. He was born in East Freedom, uh, Pennsylvania, which is a way better place to be born than West Freedom, Pennsylvania. You don't want to be from there. And uh, ended up starting Ligenfelter Performance in Indiana. And this was one of the cars uh, that he uh, developed a kit for. Uh, this one has the 630 tune, which is their mildest, but adds almost 80 horsepower to the mix. Uh, they put a new pulley and shaft on the supercharger. Uh, they change the ECU and do a few little tweaks with the uh, electronic tuning and physical tuning on the engine. 
to pull it up to 630. So uh, this nut job who bought like the world's most perfect 12,000 mile uh, Cadillac CTSV coupe pre-owned delivers it to Lingenfelter who gives him another 80 horse because the 556 just wasn't enough. Oh, that's a guy after my own heart. So uh, anyway, 630 wild ponies under the hood on this pushrod MSA V8 engine running through a six-speed automatic, which is good for acceleration, even if I prefer the manual for driving. Uh, the, uh, the automatic is where it's at if you want to do quarter-mile times and stoplight to stoplight racing, uh, which why not? I mean, this thing it will almost mirror a 911 uh, turbo from a 60-mile-an-hour kickdown. Uh, all the way up to uh, 150 miles an hour, and that thing's a rocket ship. Uh, it lays waste to the cars of the M3, the M5, the Audi RS5, the uh, you name it. Uh, this car, at the time, all of its competition was pretty much left in the dust. You had to get into stuff that cost like twice as much before you got anything approaching the same horsepower and performance figures. America, fuck yeah. <laughs> Absolutely love it. You know, for many, many decades, there was always this promise of uh, the United States competing with the Europeans. Maybe you remember the celebrity Eurosport, you know, for instance. There was just always this attempt by American car manufacturers to take it to the Euros, and they never really pulled it off. You know, they tried, God help them, but they just never pulled it off. The stuff that came from Benz and BMW was always much better. Well, enter Cadillac in this modern era, and that is just not true anymore. Uh, this CTSV really took it to them uh, in a way that just uh uh, blew things up. Uh, in fact, the CTSV uh, sedan, the original one, was the first uh, American car to break the magical uh, eight-minute mark on the uh, on the Nuremberg Ring. Very, very impressive. Very cool. And uh, again, very prideful. I just want to wave American flags all over it. Look like at the wheels and the oh god, with those yellow calipers and those dinner plate brakes. It's just bad to the friggin' bone. Anyway, let's get inside of it. Uh, this thing has been kept by a lunatic, uh, babied, kissed on, smooched on. You know, he put this Ligenfelter kit in, I think just to be, I, don't, I don't doubt he ever really used it. I mean, he has no miles on the car. He's barely driving it. He ceramic coated it, uh, put on some sort of a clear bra system in the front, put it under a cover inside. Uh, this is that best of both worlds thing uh, where you have the car guy lunacy uh, intermixed with the garage queen mentality. So you end up with just an incredible piece with tons of horsepower. Didn't even bother putting the Ligenfelter badges on the engine or the side of the car, uh, which I really appreciate. It keeps it a sleeper. People think it only has 556 horsepower out of that detuned ZR1 engine instead of the 630 it actually has. Unbelievable. Uh, anyway, very, very cool stuff. Let's have a look inside. So Corvette style, you've got these little pinchy things on the doors uh, to open them. It's electronic. You do that. Uh, you can immediately see it has that uh, almost $4,000 Recaro seat option. Now we got the sun coming in, uh, which, uh, you know, give you very supportive and sporty seats. That'll keep your ass planted as you're doing all kinds of crazy cornering maneuvers. Uh, let me walk around to this side because I wasn't able to get the driver's seat to immediately fold down. I don't know what the point is of that. Anyway, you got room in back for a couple of Canadians. If they're over 5'8", they're probably going to bang their head on the crap up there. You could stuff some kids back there, and who the hell cares? I mean, you know, you get back seats and you're lucky. Be thankful for that. And that really is all that you need, because what the hell do you care about your backseat passengers? Uh, this is not a car for them. This is a car for you. Let's fire it up and get some AC going. Look at this beautiful door panel treatment. I mean, Cadillac really did get their shit together uh, by the time this car came out. You have this lovely uh, bird's eye maple looking wood inlay into this faux leather stitch stuff with the Alcantara inserts and more leather looking stuff there. Uh, this is the push electronic open release for the door. Uh, you see it's got a Bose thing on the speaker. You got more swoopy piano black stuff. Nice little place to stuff a nine millimeter in there and uh, otherwise lovely. The fit and finish on this car is terrific. Right, I've got my key in my pocket so I can fire it up by just turning this little dongle on the side and let's get some AC going. I'm also going to back up and get out of the sun for a minute. 
I mean, I am just dripping. This is beyond the pale. I feel like, what was that movie, Papillon or something? The, uh, the butterfly thing with the French prison. I feel like that guy all the time, just suffering. Gee, it's got cool seats. What's that? That going as well. All right, so let me back up out of the sun if I can. Hopefully, hopefully I don't run over any goats. Ha, 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 Marianne. Can't believe they did that to me. Can't believe they put me in a place that has loose, crazed, wild goats. And she said, oh, goats don't kill people. You know, I immediately Googled that and found out that goats, yes, goats do kill people. There have been several goat deaths uh, in the United States in the last few years. So, uh, you know, take that to the bank. Violent little things. Uh, anyway, you've got this very nicely laid out instrument cluster. Uh, 200 mile an hour speedo, love it. Uh, 6,000 RPM tack with, uh, you see the little red lights that follow the tack up. That's kind of cool shit. Uh, you've got full gauges there. You've got your water temp, your fuel, your boost gauge. Uh, you can get through and change the little trip display underneath that gives you your fuel range. Look at that average economy, 15.4 out of a 630 horse car. Uh, your uh, track timer, nice, your instant economy, your average speed, digital speedometer. You get into the information. You have a G meter. And uh, yeah, that's what your normal Cadillac buyer needs. I, I remember the 79 Coupe de Ville I had needed a G meter. Probably would have turned about 0.3 on a skid pad. Uh, oil life remaining. The, you, know, you can get into all this crap. Your tire pressures and whatnot. Volts. Uh, I think somewhere we're going to find gauges as well. It does have blind spots. You can see that in the mirrors. Glad I saw that. There's your trans temp oil pressure. Uh, all very, very cool stuff. Auto door locks, all the. Well, anyway, you get it. There's all kinds of crap you can do. Let me get back into the G meter because that's the fun shit on a Cadillac. There we go. Uh, you've got this beautiful uh, sporty leather steering wheel, uh, bigger than you'd expect, and what's uh, really a hot rod, but nice. For me, I like it. Uh, some of the real car nuts out there want a smaller diameter wheel that's thicker. To me, this is perfect. This is as thick as I want it. I always have little hands, so, you know, I don't need this giant steering wheel grip. Uh, you got little grippies at the 10 and 2. There's paddles behind the piano black stuff. You got your cruise control here. Uh, traction control off. We'll get into that in a second. Phone. Uh, other stuff. You have to pair your Bluetooth with the voice command, which is a little weird, but eh, whatever. Small price to pay. Uh, here you've got this pop-up screen. You see if I press that, it'll come up. Uh, that gets you into your, you know, your display. It's got a big camera very nice and even if you have the screen down when you go into reverse it'll pop the screen up automatically to give you the camera uh, it also gives your navigation there it is calculating route uh, your audio am fm xm hard drive auxiliary uh, apparently this was a little bit vintage even in 13 the q system had come out in some other cadillacs which was much more advanced and that's the one that would make the snowflakes happy with the instagrams and the tick what the hell no, I don't want navigation right now. Oh, God, it better not start talking to me. It really better not. All right, menu. Menu does nothing. Okay. Repeat, nav, destination. No, I don't want to go home. I want to delete that. Yes, I'm going to delete home. Good. Now we're not going anywhere. Uh, in the glove box here, uh, you've got your Ligenfalter uh, ECM tuner, so you can use that to... Uh, uh, set the tune up on the car. Uh, also a nice place for a Walther PPQ if you happen to uh, be worried that there are some goats hanging around. Uh, even one with the extra 5 inch barrel for accuracy. So uh, that's in there should the goats emerge. Uh, we've got this little packet, this envelope with uh, all the Megan Felter uh, tuning stuff. I think he paid like four grand for all this. Uh, tells you all the stuff that came with it. Uh, even gives you the uh, the dyno. So uh, there we go. Max power, torque, max torque, engine RPM, the different stuff. But let's see what we got. There's the uh, the kit that it came with: the air filter, the pulleys, the belts, all that stuff. Uh, 630 horsepower Cadillac CTSV kit, and it was professionally installed in this car. Uh, very very cool stuff. And kudos to this cat. Uh, for having what is uh, to me a very very neat piece 
Uh, down here you've got your uh, climate control stuff, you've got your hot and cool seats, you've got more piano black, you've got the uh, shifter that <clears throat> if you run over here into manual mode, uh, you see we have a big red one. I do like the indicator on that. And if you bang your way through, well that's downshift. Upshift is the uh, right side. You see two, three, four, five, six. Well, I won't let you leave in anything but third. Let me get my seatbelt on. Uh, up here you've got a self-dimming mirror with OnStar, very nice stuff. You've got a sunroof, doesn't go back but it tilts and uh, does have a uh, power screen. So very, very lovely stuff. Uh, I think we got everything, so let's go for a spin. Uh, now, if you want, okay, this has magnetic ride control. Uh, it's also used in the Corvette. Uh, it was, um, uh, I believe, uh, designed by Delphi or eh, whatever, the GM anyway, came up with magnetic ride control. And it's so good that even Ferrari has uh, bought the technology for use in their cars. And uh, what that basically is is a suspension mode. You see, we got our shocks here. I press that, we're in sport or tour, I'm gonna leave it in, uh I'll leave it in sport and you can feel an almost instantaneous change in the uh, suspension rate and travel and that's because it does instantaneously change it uses a magnetic fluid in the struts uh, that uh, when you adjust the uh, uh, the forces on that it can stiffen and loosen the struts at a moment's notice I mean just instantly and it can turn this thing into a very compliant lovely touring car uh, into much more of a track dog very very cool stuff uh, now, if I press this once, you get traction off with Stabilitrack, their uh, traction control on. I press it twice, I'm back to on, off, and then I can go into competitive mode, which makes the Stabilitrack still on, but not quite as, uh, you know, interfering as before. And then I think if I press and hold it, There we go, everything off. So now you are on your own. It has no driving aids. It's gonna give you, it has ABS still, but uh, it's got no traction control, no stability track, uh, and you've got 630 horsepower to play with. I mean, if I were on a racetrack right now, I could run circles or, I, oh my God, could you get yourself into trouble? And honestly, that's one of the reasons that I just couldn't daily drive this car, uh, is I would end up in the back of a squad car in no time. Right, we're in first gear. Uh, so anyway, after being admonished yesterday for being left in a yard with insane, crazed, bloodthirsty goats, uh, I have to go through the door and wait now for the gates to close behind us. So I don't know how long that's going to take. should almost just pause the camera and come back. I suppose I could get out and press the button, but I don't know what the hell I'm doing. I've never had closing gates at my house before, so uh, obviously I, uh, I'm just not living very well. Uh, and again, Peter and uh, Marianne off gallivanting around the country. That's why you're getting me instead of her. That's why many of you are hateful and <laughs> say hurtful, terrible things uh, to otherwise happy people who have to find out that they're not loved, which is fine. I'm kidding. I'm absolutely kidding. I don't feel any of it. I'm completely numb. After 20 years of selling cars to people, uh, you could pretty much stab me in the head with a fork and I don't care anymore. It really means nothing. Uh, but uh, but anyway, don't worry about it. Marianne will be back before you know it. I'm going to get out of the damn car and see if I can close the gate manually. The idea of just sitting here is going to make me go batshit. <sighs> Call. What does this do? Nothing. Nothing. No, I don't know how to close the gate. All right, so I'm just going to look. I'm going to pause this thing. Oh, there it goes. All right, there it goes. All right, thank God. So now I don't have to worry about the goats anymore. Not that I ever was in any real way. And we're going to go off for a spin. I'm sorry, I know how excruciating that was, and I apologize. All right, so now you go back. We've got transmission mode sport. We're in manual. We're in first. Uh, my shifting, oh yeah, fuck. Okay, so it's from the uh, right side. So it's gonna hit red line so fast, I have to be careful. But anyway, so here you are, just ho-hum on your way to work. Everything happy, everything lovely. Things are going well. And uh, hit it. And you have an instant 630 horsepower of insanity 
absolute insanity at your fingertips, at your gas pedal, at your steering wheel. That is just not the Cadillac that I grew up with, and God bless them. Right, I'm going to go back into drive mode because, uh, of course, I am. Look at all these lunatics out in the road. Look at them in the middle of the road. They ain't head to the right or the left, for God's sake. That is one really bad hat, Harry. Anyway, so uh, let's just keep going. Um, so anyway, we've got all this insanity at your fingertips in a friggin' Cadillac. I mean, it is just not what you expect if you were born, you know, in the very early 70s like me. You do not expect a car like this. It really did take me by surprise. Uh, you don't expect a car like this from GM at all. Maybe Corvette, you know, with their ZR1s and such. Uh, but your average Cadillac, I mean, what? this is basically an Eldorado. Uh, you know, in, in 2013 form, and to think it can be this good is just amazing. So you've got, um, I can't forget we've got traction control off. It'd be very easy for me to put this car in a ditch, the way I'm not paying attention right now. Uh, let's see. My God, is that awesome. This is like half throttle. The supercharger wine, the drifty back end from, I believe, a liquid-cooled uh, 323 differential. I mean, what a cool, cool car. And talk about taking it to the Europeans. Listen to that. Oh, my God. Anyway, you know, so you've got your 556 plus the insane Ligenfelter uh, additional 80-ish uh, horsepower just turns this thing into a lunacy machine. And if you're lucky enough to have it, you're going to have a lot of fun until you end up in the police cruiser. So anyway, there it is. What a great morning. I just love it when I have a car like this to drive. Uh, if you have an interest, uh, you can look up the website, Auto House of Naples, uh, autohousenaples.com. You can call the guys down there. They're nice guys. Uh, they'll sell you the car, and uh, you'll be very lucky to get this one. You really, really will. What an incredible machine. Uh, the beautiful mix of a 14,000-mile garage queen uh, at the same time with the uh, insane Ligon Felter package. You gotta absolutely love it. Uh, so, yeah, or you could call them. Yeah, 239 263 8500. And uh, of course, Peter and Marianne will be back in a week or so, and maybe she'll start doing some videos to make you guys happy again. Uh, anyway, thanks very much for having a look. Appreciate it. Uh, this one again is gonna be cross posted over on Auto Europa Naples, my old channel uh, that's soon to get a name change and an overhaul to become an all review channel. And uh, hopefully, we can go forward from there. So thanks very much. Sorry for the extra long video, but uh, we'll keep rolling next time. Take care.